This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. There is still a lot left to be decided here for the 2023 NFL season. We enter the final week of the regular season with some key games still approaching. We're going to break down those games with Dr. Ed Fang, get his read on those games, what his numbers say to get you ready for what should be a thrilling final week of the year. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here as I am every Thursday by Dr. Ed Feng. You can find his work at thepowerrank.com and check him out on Twitter at thepowerrankedd. Week 18 with a lot of impactful games still to come. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's oh, it's never my uh, favorite week, week 18, when some teams are sitting and some teams like the chiefs get a gift and, and, and have nothing to play for. So that you kind of get a week off. Never really my favorite in terms of, of making predictions, but did see some games with value. So uh, I'm looking forward to talking about that. Yeah. And it's possible those teams sitting players, maybe values too. question mark, you know, the sure. market tries to set where things are. It's possible they go too far. I'm hoping that winds up being the case. We're going to break down how Ed handles things when we've got these imbalanced motivation spots, teams resting players, and things like that, uh, and dive into the key games, talking Texans, Colts, Bills, Dolphins, and Ed Severett bets for Week 18 all throughout today. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. If you want a breakdown of the props for that Texans versus Colts game, that is already posted on the Covering the Spread podcast feed uh, via Tom Vecchio, Primetime Tom, breaking down Saturday night football, Texans and Colts. That's up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and over on FanDuel TV+. Plus. To get FanDuel TV+, Plus, go to FanDuel.com slash watch. Log in with your FanDuel account or download the FanDuel TV Plus app on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Roku devices. Tomorrow we're talking props with Tom to get ready for the uh, player prop side of things for week 18. And Tom will also take a look at the Bills and Dolphins props with primetime Tom on Saturday morning. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there is still time to get in on the action with America with FanDuel, America's number one sports book right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live, same-game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and more. So visit FanDuel and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as now withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Over to FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9 with an Indiana. 1-800-522-4700 visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts, or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY, or text hope and y in New York. Now, we'll talk about these key games where there is big motivation for both sides in one second. But first, let's take in and talk about motivation. Uh, it obviously matters a lot in Week 18 because we got a lot of teams setting players, and books account for that within their spreads, obviously. But as mentioned, there's always another side to bet, too. How willing are you, Ed, to potentially bet on teams resting starters now that you have a model that can actually account for which quarterback will be out there in a specific week? Right. I think we should make the distinction between motivation and players not playing. I think those are two completely different things. If Kansas City's, if Mahomes is not playing for Kansas City and neither are their top three receivers, that's a lot different than a motivation issue, whether Carolina is going to show up uh, against uh, whoever they're playing, Tampa Bay. Yeah. 
I don't think motiv. I, I, I don't. I, I think we should actually not use the word motivation. I think every player that gets on a field this week is motivated. This is simply because anytime I've talked to anyone that's remotely associated to the NFL, they are the most competitive person that I've ever met. <laughs> Uh, I don't, I don't think these guys really know, um, how to not be a hundred percent and, and go all out. We had a, a, a lot of this conversation with Miami dolphins when they sucked that year under Brian Flores and whether they were motivated and they turned out to be pretty motivated. Uh, these guys are all fighting for contracts. It's obviously different at the other end when you're potentially resting people, teams like Baltimore, teams like Kansas city. So that's different. And that's just because those guys are simply resting and, uh, and they have no impact on the game. So me personally, you know, like uh, I will account for player absences and try to do my best, uh, try to do my best in terms of quarterbacks and and what they've done. And and that's really been a good tool. Like I've um, like my predictions went through a pretty bad stretch for a couple of weeks in the middle of the season. They've been really good since. So I feel really confident about that. It's the same algorithm. It's just adapted to quarterbacks. So it, it should be the same. And then um yeah. And then so if people are sitting. That's one thing. Uh, I, I assume everyone's motivated. Uh, everyone wants that next contract. So um, so that's a lot different. Yeah, for sure. And I think that the motivation aspect of it, I agree with you where those teams will push, especially like if you think about it, it's kind of like. I don't know, dismissive to say that like a team being motivated will suddenly push them to like cover a larger number. I think we've seen that in the Jags Titans spread this week. It was five and a half at one point. It's not on the three and a half because like the tight the Titans are a professional football team. Like they're gonna try and like they've got guys who are fighting for contracts, like you said. Will Levis probably wants a starting job next year. This could impact that because it's a small sample size. I don't think you can sacrifice a full game of impact you know of effort in such a small sample size sport so i'm personally very willing to bet on a team that doesn't have quote unquote motivation if i think there is value in that number i don't adjust you know like with that bucks panthers game i'm not adjusting the spread just because the bucks have a motivation to win whereas the panthers don't like why would i do that like i just happen to show value on the bucks um so to me it's like I'm not going to adjust for that. I'm very okay betting on a team that is dead for the playoffs as long as I, you know, show value on them. And if I see value on a team like, you know, Baltimore against Pittsburgh after adjusting for all their absences, I'm okay betting them too because I know that that stuff is accounted for within the numbers that I have. Absolutely. I was looking at Jacksonville earlier today. I'm pretty sure that moved in the last couple hours because yeah. when i looked at it this morning it was five five and a half so i think that that's a, that's some interesting line movement that i certainly don't agree with if uh if trevor's playing um but yeah i mean it's just an interesting week for betting because you have some yeah. elements of normal regular season and then you have some elements of preseason for sure and uh lawrence got another limited practice on uh thursday so trending towards playing christian kirk uh was I mean, he's, he's at practice I'd be still, I don't know. I don't think he'll play. It's a pretty quick turnaround from like legit surgery. So I'm not sure if he'll be back, but like, I think Cam Robinson can be back for them too. So they're getting healthier than they were, even if Lawrence is not hundred percent just yet. Uh, I, I mean, they haven't clinched a playoff spot if I'm not mistaken, right? No. Like they can win the division. Trevor's going to play. Right. Like, but like, I thought he played last week because they were in the same right. spot where like, you know, right. they were based. it's the Panthers. So it's one thing, but like, I thought he'd play last week. And to me, it was kind of a signal of, oh, he's not 100%. If he couldn't go for that game, that to me was a bit of a red flag. Right. And then you have issues like Baker Mayfield has a rib injury. I mean, there's no way he doesn't play, right? Right. Well, there's there's the motivation to win the NFC South. But Ed, as always, it's a Baker Mayfield revenge game. So that's more important. Like playoffs uh, and 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 a contract that has heavy incentives for playoffs or revenge against your former team like what He's matters only more? there for like two weeks how much yeah. revenge can there be Ed, you can be on a team for 15 minutes like it's it's still a revenge game a revenge game is a revenge game no matter what i'm not changing the criteria that's a, that is 15 percent weight in the model is is it a revenge game for a single player on that team if yes light them up that's the rule i don't make the rules i just follow them No revenge games that I know of for the first game we're going to talk about for this week. That is the Texans and the Colts right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Texans are favored by a point and a half. This was the Colts minus one and a half earlier on, but it has shifted in favor of the the Texans. Total in this game is 47 and a half. And 
As mentioned, Ed, it was initially the Colts favored. It is now the Texans at minus 118 on the money line. Do you agree with that movement towards the Texans in this game? I absolutely agree with this movement. I was kind of surprised that Indy was the favorite. Houston's been the better team this year. I actually have Houston by 1.4, so my numbers agree with this as well. Houston has been an interesting case this year. Uh, I've actually never done this in the past, but I've, I've actually completely thrown out their prior because I just don't think it applies. Uh, I've done the same for the Rams as well. Uh, they're simply a different team than what anyone expected in the preseason. CJ Stroud has been great. Um, uh, they have an above average passing offense with the rookie. I mean, Nico Collins is, is just has been fantastic. I mean, I think more than anyone could have expected. And, uh, you know, they haven't been terrible on defense. It's, it's kind of interesting to look that they're 11th in, in passing success rate on defense, but 30th in yards per pass attempt. But, you know, still an improvement over last year. Derek Stingley Jr. was a very highly touted cornerback, has been hurt often in his career, was hurt earlier this year, but he's been back and actually has a 83 cover grade uh, this season. So that's certainly promising for the Houston Texans. And Indianapolis with, with Gardner Minshew is, is very meh. You know, they're below average uh, passing uh, on offense, below average actually 30th on defense. Michael Pittman's a pretty nice uh, weapon on offense, but otherwise, uh, you know, nothing really stands out about this team to me. I do expect Houston to get this done. And uh, yeah, I completely agree with the movement. Obviously no value right now, according to my model. Um, but uh, Houston's been a great story and I expect them to continue and uh, make the playoffs here. Yeah, I'm on board with you. I think this was the proper move towards the Texans in this game. I did not get to a point where I actually showed value on the Texans initially. I had a 51.2% to win. And where they were at, they were like just below my threshold for actually showing value on the money line enough where I bet it. So I didn't pass or I didn't take it there. It's now moved to a point where, you know, they're obviously no value. I've got the Texans by 0.3 points in this game. So First to toss up, uh, similar to you, no value on the spread in this one. I do show value on the under. I have it at like 42 and a half. Um, I know the Colts pace is like very, very high, and that's why their totals are high. They've had a lot of high scoring games this year, and the Texans defense is not great. But like you said, uh, Stingley's played. He's been very effective when he's been out there this year. He's missing yep. time. So I still like the under. Talked about that on Tuesday show. I do still show value there under 47 and a half at minus 115. I think that the Texans are a bit more run heavy than I would like at times. Um, I, I adore CJ Stroud, but I think they sometimes, you know, want to run the ball a bit more than they should, which is part of why I do show value in the under in this game. But I think the Texans are slightly better. They're the better team. And then once you give Indy home field, it's still a slight lean towards the Texans. But similar to you, Ed, no value with where that one stands right now. But kind of like as a selfish football watching perspective, I want to watch CJ Stroud in the playoffs more than I want right. to watch Gardner Minshew. And I do have the Texans uh, NS or ASC South ticket from earlier on this year. So rooting for that still. I, I would need the Titans to win Sunday as well. But hey, it's a, it's a possibility still at least. Yeah, you're going to need the NFL to fix this game, right? So Houston wins and we don't have to watch Gardner Minshew in the playoffs. Can we arrange that? Can uh, can we talk to some higher ups? To, I'm pretty to sure there's people, people out there on the X or the Twitter or oh, yeah. whatever we're calling the Jalen Toilet Bowl on the internet uh, <laughs> that could, that believe that that can happen. I've got most of those accounts muted, which is good. Uh, good for good for mm -hmm. my mental well being for sure. Let's go now to Sunday and talk about another key game in the NFC South this time. That is the Falcons at the Saints. Both these teams are still alive to make the playoffs right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Saints are three point favorites. Total in this game is 42 and a half. And you were on the Saints last week, Ed. Obviously that went very well for you. Are you on them once again here against the Falcons? Yeah, I think that's to be determined. This is an interesting game because a year ago I would have just leaned on my market model uh, which isolated games with just uh, Taylor Henneke for Atlanta. And that would have put me right on market here. And it would have said New Orleans minus three in this game. This year, I've, I've actually done these quarterbacks, uh, done a lot of these passing stats that are specific to a quarterback. And that's not good for Atlanta. Taylor Henneke uh, has an expected passing success rate of 33% this year. Uh, the NFL average is 42. So when you're 9.9% 9 worse, than average that that's not a good thing and you know when i talk about this next year i'll, I'll do it in terms of standard deviations but I'm, I'm just not at that point <laughs> right now heineke's been bad this year so you know there's a couple of um 
so uh, yeah anyways with that data for heineke i actually have new orleans by more than five so showing value on new orleans in this game it's complicated because Heineke wasn't as bad in, in Washington last year. Uh, you know, his adjusted passing success rate was almost 40%. So not quite NFL average, but much better than he was this year. His true skill or wherever he can put this land offense is probably somewhere between 33% and 40%. And then, and then there's the fact that he's hurt. And, uh, you know, he didn't practice. I think he was limited in practice on Wednesday. And Desmond Ritter... Uh, has been better. He's been about 40% in my just passing success rate. Again, not NFL average, but better than what Heineke has done this season. So, you know, if Heineke starts and, and Ritter stays on the bench, I think I would show value at New Orleans minus three here, but I think there's a lot to be determined before this game kicks off about, about who's actually playing. So, so I'm going to wait on that. I mean, you have my prediction uh, if, if Heineke is in there. Yeah, uh, you mentioned uh, Heineke in practice Wednesday, limited for him, ankle injury that he suffered in that Bears game. So still up in the air whether he goes. Alvin Kamara, also a question mark for this game, didn't practice again on Thursday for the right. Saints, but they could get Kendra Miller back for this one. Uh, but no Michael uh, Michael Thomas and no Marshawn Lattimore, uh, as they're both still on IR for the Saints in this game. I've got the Saints by 5.3 in this game, so it sounds like it's very similar to your number with Heineke. Um which to me would also imply value. I would bet they go Heineke if he's healthy enough to go in large part, because sure. it's tough to justify back and forth, back and forth, snip, snap, snip, snap kind of thing with an NFL quarterback situation. But I do agree with you that like it hasn't been good uh, so far this year. If they want to use the out of, okay, you know, Heineke is banged up. We'll go Ritter. They have that out for sure. I think the reason they've gone Heineke is that it's a lot of, negative play bias and it's been right. a lot of like impactful negative plays for Ritter. So he makes these like crazy interceptions in the red zone. Is that variance or is it something like broken in his brain? It's probably variance, frankly. So like, I think that's why your approach of viewing it as being a downgrade to Heineke is probably correct because down to down Ritter is the better player. He just makes weird picks at very inopportune times and arthur smith is trying to save his job and doesn't want one of those to bite him in the rear so it's kind of like a fear it seems like so i think that i agree with your approach and your analysis where in this game it's a downgrade to go heineke but i also do think they will go heineke but i think right. it makes sense to kind of hold off on laying the three if you if you agree with that's numbers that it would be such a big downgrade to go heineke over to get the confirmation first and hope you can still get it's minus 118 now, so it's probably more likely to go three and a half um, than, than stick at three if Heineke is announced as starter. Uh, but I think that that's kind of the way you can play things here based on where things currently stand. The Minnesota Vikings had a similar issue at the quarterback position. They had a somewhat decent quarterback who uh, in Nick Mullins that uh, was awful with interceptions, and they yeah. decided to go with the rookie Jaron Hall, and that didn't turn out so great. Obviously, things is all sample, small sample size, and and it hasn't turned out so poorly for Atlanta. Uh, going with Taylor Heineke, who we kind of know what we have, right? I mean, you know, we we've, we've got a decent sample size, yeah. uh, bigger sample size, and maybe he's not that that much worse than Ritter if you if you look at it overall. But um, I don't know. I mean, personally, Ritter has exceeded expectations, and I know he's had a bunch of fluky turnovers there. But and as much as uh, you know, I've done pretty well predicting interceptions yeah. turnovers this year. There is a huge element of randomness and uh, right. you know, maybe coaches should see that, especially if you're trying to save your job, and which I don't think is going to get saved. No, I don't really either personally. Uh, Cause I do think the saints win this game. And then, you know, you kind of look at a, uh, the way the season went, I think it would probably not be a good thing for Arthur Smith for sure. And like with, with Ritter again, it's not just that turnovers are random, but where those turnovers occur is pretty random. And he's gotten right. bitten pretty hard uh, by right. that, both with picks and fumbles uh, so far right. this year. A lot of those coming inside or close to the red zone. Let's it's talk here about, go ahead. Well, hold on, just real quick. It's interesting how this coaching stuff kind of depends on sequencing of events, right? Right. Because I feel like Matt <laughs> Eberfus has saved his job with the right. way the field has played right. recently and you give him a little pass because fields was hurt and the defense has played pretty well. Like I kind of feel like he keeps his job. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Even though they're only seven to nine, I mean, that it was would the obviously help to beat green Bay, but and like, he's a defensive guy. They've made pretty big gains on defense. Was that because Eber Eberflus or because they added Montez sweat? 
who can say, you know, it's a combination of those two things playing pretty well, you know? Yeah. (laughs) And so I think it's, it's a combination of things. And I do think that he does keep that job and, you know, it's very odd. Like you'll see a lot of situations where it's like, okay, this quarter or the, this coach had a weird circumstance. Let's give him a year with a rookie quarterback, see what happens. But like then so often you see rookie quarterbacks have to change head coaches in their second year. And it's like, will we see that kind of situation if the Bears decide to draft a quarterback at one? I don't know. I, I think it's a it's a weird situation. I have no idea what to think about anything with the Bears, honestly, with the coaching staff, but they've had a they've had a weird like remember the beginning of the year Ed, it was talking about uh their DC like uh left because of personal reasons like they've had a weird year and it's kind of like you sure. said it's a sequencing because if that stuff happens at the end and they exactly. you know their their wins aren't backloaded he's dust for sure for sure and that's exactly my point right. and we've also like the sequencing events with fields playing better recently right. and now we get to spend all the off season talking about what they do with the number one pick I mean, it's just it's Justin Fields just set us up perfectly for offseason uh, Internet toilet bowl conversation. Content God, Justin Fields. Thank That's you right. for your service. Let's talk now about the Sunday night football game between the Bills and the Dolphins. Right now, at FanDuel Sportsbook, the Bills are three point favorites. Total in this game is forty nine and a half and the Dolphins are banged up. They have definitely fallen off here recently, but they're also now three point home underdogs in a game. They have high motivation to win and. Honestly, the Bills offense has been uneven of late as well. So has the market moved too far against the Dolphins in this spot for you, Ed? Yeah, I was a little horrified when my model spit out a pick in this game. I've got the same. But then you think about it and you're like, well, that kind of makes sense. You know, Buffalo's the better team. They're on the road, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then you look at the injuries and it's it's complicated. I got to think Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle play because I don't know. I don't know why I think they do, but I think they do. It's a big game. You know, they'll, they'll get healthy. They'll get, you know, they'll take care of themselves. Uh, you know, the Javon Holland is, is potentially out and he's played really well this year, at least according to PFF grades. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, look, I got Buffalo at about five points better than NFL average. When you put everything together, you put the performance together. Um, We've, we've talked about their defense. I think their defense is actually pretty good and much certainly much better than the season-long numbers uh, indicate. So I do believe Buffalo is about five points better than, than NFL average. So if you really believe that uh, Buffalo should be minus three on the road, then you're basically saying Miami is NFL average or a point better than, than NFL average with all these injuries, with these injury situations. And, and and remember, like the guy we all expected to be injured for the Dolphins is perfectly healthy into a tongue of Iloa. <laughs> So I don't know. I mean, I think all the numbers suggest value on Miami and I I'm, I, I'm personally not interested in betting it. I haven't bet it. I might by the time before it kicks off, but it doesn't quite feel right. So um, yeah, I don't know. It'd be interesting. I, I feel like maybe this is one that you sit back and, and just enjoy the game um, instead of, uh, instead of betting the spread. See, I've taken the opposite approach of not enjoying the game because I took the under. Um, I'm actively rooting against a fun game in this one because it's a combination of a couple of things. It's the injuries for the Dolphins. They've got defensive injuries, too. Um, Bradley Chubb is out. Xavier Howard is banged up, too. It's like that does benefit the over. But Waddle, I think I agree with you. I think he will go. They kind of hinted at that earlier on this week. He hasn't practiced yet this week, but. It's an ankle sprain, so I think he should be able to go, given how important this game is. Hill will definitely play, so I think he'll be good to go. Uh, Mostert, I don't honestly care too much about personally, given how good A-Chan has been. So it's like, you've got the injury to Waddle. Tua's got a slightly banged up shoulder. And then on the opposing side, the Bills have been very run heavy recently. Now, it's not a terrible thing for them, because they've been very efficient running the ball this year. So it's not like, uh, what is Joe Brady doing? But like that's also conducive to an under because it keeps the clock moving and isn't going to move the ball in as big of chunks as you would if you were throwing the ball. So I have taken the approach of, I don't want fun. I'm going to root against uh, root, <laughs> root against points here in what should be a, a classic football game on Sunday Night Football and taking the under 49 and a half. Uh, it's minus 115 right now. I've got it 45.9, honestly. So I'm pretty well below that number as well. You get wins on uh, some key numbers of 47, 48, 49. So I feel pretty good about the under personally for the uh, a couple of different reasons. 
And I, I'm the same as you, where I show value in the Dolphins in this game. I've not taken it yet, and like the market's been all over the place. It was plus 130 on the money line earlier on today. It's now plus 136. So I don't know where the market will go. Maybe if it keeps on moving against uh, Miami, then maybe I buy in. But the plus three is minus 118 right now, so I don't think that'll happen. I don't think we're going to get a three and a half or anything here. So I think right. I'll probably just wind up staying away from the spread and, and money line here and just sitting with the under and being a Scrooge on Sunday night. Yeah, it's, it's, that's less fun, though. So I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I will end up betting it before this game kicks off on Sunday night. Uh, it should be a good one. Uh, we we will actually know. I mean, it could be that both these teams are in the playoffs. Yeah. They still have a lot to play for in terms yeah. of the division crown. And, and oh, yeah, actually, like my bet for Buffalo to win the division. I have the same which one. Looked pretty terrible. Yeah, for a long time. So, but yeah, should be should be a great one. The one thing I did do in this game, other than the under, was uh, Josh Allen rushing. Something we talked about with JJ McCarthy in the college football side of things was uh, rushing props in Ooh, high leverage games. Yeah, thirty six and a half for Allen is the current number. I looked at alt markets honestly, and I think there's some value in there uh, in climbing a bit higher, just because he is an ostrich. Uh, they want to let the ostrich roam in a high leverage game. I think we're going to see a lot of design runs for Josh Allen here. Um, anytime touchdown numbers, he's been having a lot of like uh, red zone rushing attempts recently. Uh, he's had some tush pushes towards the goal line. He's he's minus 130 for an anytime touchdown. Like, I don't I don't hate the idea of looking at like multiple touchdown games that doesn't correlate well with my under. Uh, but I think that if you want to have some like fun in this game, I'm probably looking towards Josh Allen rushing numbers. Anytime touchdown numbers, like those are more fun than rooting for an under. So I think that's all right. You could take if you wanted to have more fun in watching this game. Yeah. What about other spots where you see value across week 18, Ed? What do you see in there? About a month ago, I was really excited to bet the Detroit Lions against the, the Minnesota Vikings. And it just didn't work out for me when they were at Minnesota a couple weeks ago. I thought the number was right. Didn't think I would actually be betting this game because uh, so my number has it at about uh, uh, what do I have it? I have it about five and I think the market was four and a half or five maybe earlier this week. For whatever reason, it has uh, come back to three and a half. Look, I think the Detroit Lions offense just rolls over this this Minnesota Vikings defense. The Vikings defense is terrible and both the corners are questionable this week. Um, and then, um, so this prediction actually includes uh, numbers with Nick Mullins. In terms of passing success rate, he's actually been pretty good, pretty close to NFL average, which I think is about as good as you can hope for after after losing Kirk Cousins. And so, you know, we're, we're actually giving Minnesota a lot of credit in this prediction that still has Detroit by almost five. Um, Numbers-wise, it, it's not a huge edge in, in, in ter- compared to the markets, but I do like this game. Uh, I don't. I don't, you know, Detroit doesn't have the most to play for, but, but, but it's Dan Campbell. I mean, <laughs> you know, you just kind of play for Dan Campbell. And uh, so, so I, I like this, this spot here. I think Detroit's, um, you know, they were out of the playoffs last year and ended up beating Green Bay, which I think was kind of a signature type uh, statement about like, you know, the effort that the Lions are going to put in uh, no matter the situation. So I like Detroit minus three and a half here. Yeah, my guess is that we've seen the market move towards Minnesota as a result of the fact that the the Lions are locked into effectively locked into the three seed, but they're not totally in there. And if they're they totally in there, right? If they were to get the two seed, that would mean a home game until the NFC Championship, or the they then they go on the road if the 49ers win. So like if if something happens to San Francisco, they could be at home for the NFC Championship if they get the two seed. So like there is motivation there. They would need both Philly and Dallas to lose, but like. Philly's got banged up guys. Nick Sirianni has already said there's a chance they said starters. I've got the commanders win odds at 13.5%. That's not zero. So <laughs> and like you said, Dan Campbell's a psycho. Um, and if we, if we handicap this game straight up, I've got Detroit favored by more than a touchdown personally. Um, Cause I don't really respect the Vikings off- offensively, even with Mullins out there. So I understand where you're going here. Uh, do I think that it's wise for Dan Campbell to put him on Ross St. Brown, Jared Goff, and those guys in danger? Probably not. But like, hey, I mean, it's worked out for him so far. So who am I to question the man Campbell and what he's done so far? 
Yeah, I, I really do. Uh, I, I really do like the Lions mania that has uh, kind of gripped my area of the country here. I saw my brother-in-law the other day and he drove back to Grand Rapids and he texted me and said, uh, there's a billboard that says Decker declared. <laughs> Obviously referring back to the Dallas game and all the shenanigans uh, in just a wild, wild game in which I almost fell yeah. asleep because Dallas was up by seven with about two minutes to go and golf had thrown a pick and it looked like it was over. And then Jordan gets the ball back, goes down, scores a touchdown. They call the perfect play. And then the refs uh, said uh, it wasn't good. And, and all the controversies with that, uh, I don't know. I was, I was kind of like jumping out of my seat uh, at whatever, close to midnight when I should have been asleep. Right. But, but it was fun. I think the Detroit Lions are fun. I really like watching this offense. And um, I think they get the job done against Minnesota at home. Uh, I was also a curmudgeon for that game and had the under there. So I was pretty, that was pretty fine. Whatever happened. I thought it was just kind of funny at a certain point. I love, I love, again, I love Dan Campbell, I love Jared Goff. Yeah. So I wanted them to win, but like, honestly, it was kind of comedy at a certain point, but like prime sports time for you between Michigan and Detroit. Yeah. Like, absolutely. It's probably never been this fun to be in Michigan, right? Well, I mean, just look at the Lions alone, right? Right, right. <laughs> so, like, no, it's never it's never been this fun. And, you know, they're going to be favored at home in a playoff game, yeah, which is amazing. And then, mm -hmm. you know, we'll see where it goes from there. I, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously not the best person to ask about stats or whatnot, but I don't think they've won a playoff game in longer than they've not won the division. So, right. yeah. Anyways, it's, it's it's a fun time. Like I talked about yesterday, um, you know, I think Michigan's got the inside track on on Monday night. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a great time to uh, to be in southeastern Michigan. Absolutely. If you want that full breakdown of the championship game between Michigan and Washington, you can find that right now on the Covering the Spread podcast feed over on FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. As for us, that is all that we have here for today. Again, if you want more thoughts on Texans Colts, check out Primetime Tom right now in the Covering the Spread podcast feed and on FanDuel TV+. Plus. You can also find a breakdown of Sunday Night Football uh, tomorrow via Tom Vecchio. And while Tom on talk player props for the entire slate, tomorrow morning as well ed what is going on for you this week at the power rank yeah had uh Tej seth on the podcast so grab that uh he's a data scientist at sumer sports grab that wherever you get your podcast that's uh it's called the football analytics show and then sign up for five nuggets saturday my free sports betting email newsletter that's where i curate uh, a bunch of bets so that you can have action on any given weekend check that out at thepowerrank.com Awesome. Ed, enjoy the game Monday. Enjoy uh, the other action throughout this weekend as oh, well. We we'll talk so much to you once again before Monday. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be of, great. A lot of football. It's going to be a good weekend. Once again, Saturday through Monday, all really fun games. We'll talk to you then. You can find Ed on Twitter at the Power Rank. Check out his work at thepowerrank.com. And you can find the podcast as well at the Football Analytics Show. This podcast is the Covering the Spread podcast feed. Find that on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five star rating and make sure you are subscribed. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can find me on threads at jim.sonis. And you can find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. One of Thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets. And we'll talk to you once again tomorrow. Talking some props week 18. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.